These amazing street photos, which were taken in America in the 1960s, were almost lost forever. They lay undiscovered in the basement of a camera shop in Italy for almost 50 years. Today, I want to talk about two things. I want to talk about a photographer that we featured in the latest issue of our street photography magazine. He's got a fascinating story. He's a photographer who published his first book, his debut book, when he was 81 years old. And the second thing I want to talk about is sharing photography, because this photographer wouldn't have been discovered if it wasn't for one person connecting with his work so profoundly that she couldn't help but share it with everyone she knew. So I want to talk about sharing other people's work or work that you really love and different ways to do that and how it also relates to the magazine and our motivation for creating it in the first place. But for now, let's talk about Mario Carnicelli. So in the 1960s, Mario was a documentary photographer. He was 29 years old. He lived in Tuscany in Italy, in a small city. And he entered a national photo competition where the first prize was a trip to America. And of course, he wins the competition and he goes to America for the first time for a full month. And he describes it like living in another dimension. Now imagine coming from a small city in Italy in the 60s to New York City in the 60s. Imagine the culture shock of that and the excitement of it and the excitement of being able to photograph it because Mario was prepared. He was an excellent documentary photographer. And he also had this outsider's perspective on America. He had built up an idea of what America was based on pop culture, movies and music. But when he got there, he found something very different. He found something more complex and more human. He found images of the American dream, but he also found images of sadness and isolation and loneliness. And you can see that clearly in his photos, which show the different faces of America, like this one of Harley Davidson, which seems larger than life, which seems almost like an image that an immigrant would expect to find in New York City upon landing there. But there are also more subtle images like this, which shows a degree of isolation and sadness and maybe a bit of determination in her expression, which could be truer to that American dream or the immigrant experience. Mario went on to describe America as being like a state of mind. He says that telling it is easy and difficult at the same time, that behind the opulent face it is many others, all of them true and all of them deeply meaningful. So Mario returns from his month-long trip to America and he's fascinated by the country. He's built up a significant body of work and he would go on to return to different cities in America over the next couple of years and create thousands of negatives, which he would then place in a trunk and place that trunk in a basement and then retire from photography for 40 years. He would later describe it as abandoning his vocation. He returned to Tuscany and opened a camera and printing shop in the heart of Florence, where he worked until his late 70s and then he retired from working life. By that stage, everyone had forgotten he was a photographer, he closed his business, and he was looking through his basement when he came across his old negatives. And he decided to ask local photographer and curator, Barbara Reinhardt, if she would take a look. And boom, she loves them. She describes them as a hidden treasure. She connects to them so profoundly that she can't help but share them with everyone she knows. Other photographers, curators, gallery owners. She becomes Mario's champion. She helps exhibit his work in Italy. She helps exhibit his work internationally. Barbell and a number of others that have taken an interest in Mario's work, notably David Hill, restore Mario's work and publish it in Mario's debut book, which he releases when he's 81 years old. So Mario's story is fascinating to me. And there are so many examples of artists and photographers who were never really fully appreciated in their lifetimes. Van Gogh was a famous example. He allegedly only sold one painting in his lifetime and he never saw the cultural impact that his art would have on the world. And there are some really fascinating examples within photography, like you have Vivian Mayer, for example, the uh, mysterious nanny whose work was discovered in an estate sale and went on to be published on Flickr, where it went viral. And that led to a surge of interest in her work. It's something she never lived to have any kind of agency over. There is also Eugene Ajay, who is arguably the very first street photographer. He was doing it at a time where photography was seen as a lower form of art, maybe not even a form of art, 
but his work was collected by Bernice Abbott, who bought all of his prints, all of his negatives, and championed his work for years and years until it was finally recognized 40 years after his death and published in a book and exhibited internationally. So to me, Mario's story and the story of these other photographers and artists isn't just about the work being created, but it's about the work being valued and shared. And when I think about that, you know, that's exactly what we're trying to do with our magazine. We're trying to share the work of other photographers that we admire. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the most famous photographers. We always have a mix of different profile levels. But the important thing is like we really like the photography that's in our magazine and we just want to share it with people and we want to share it in print. Which brings me to my second point, sharing the photography we love. I think it's such an important thing to do. And I think we maybe get a bit lazy about it now because it's so easy to do on social media and you feel like you've reposted someone's work or you've shared it to your stories for 24 hours and that's enough, right? Well, I don't think it is enough, really. I think we should be doing more to lift other people up or, or other photographers that we really admire. Because when we do that, we end up raising the bar and we end up lifting great photography as examples to other photographers. So I think next time you, you think about sharing someone's photo on social media, absolutely go ahead and do that. But also, you know, just send them a DM, tell them that you appreciate it. Try and describe what it is you like about their work and tell other people about it, you know? You can also do things like maybe get in touch with them and talk about organizing some kind of local exhibition of their work. It's really not that difficult to do. It's something you can do in a coffee shop relatively inexpensively. You can also form communities, you can form WhatsApp groups, and I'm sure you've, you're already doing this. You can also talk about it in our Discord chat channel where we talk about inspiration and we recommend photographers that inspire us. And you can create your own Discord channel if you like. But I think it's important to, you know, just, just talk about the photos that we love and the photographers who are doing work that's maybe a bit different and a bit interesting. And most importantly, you know, if you find something you like, whether it's a movie or a piece of music or an album, or some clothing or whatever, you know, just share it. Just, just tell other people about it. So that's it. I hope you found Mario's story interesting and I hope you like the pictures. Uh, Mario is a very interesting guy. We have an interview with him in the magazine as well, where he talks about his process and he talks about the element of humanism in his work and he references uh, old Italian movies, which you may or may not be familiar with, but he's an interesting guy to talk to uh, with so much experience. That really comes across in the interview. If you've already bought it because it's been out for a couple of weeks at this stage, thanks for the support. And if you haven't bought it, you can pick up a copy at frame-lines.com. Sorry about the hyphen. Someone already took frame lines. There's nothing we could do about it. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching and see you next time.